Hello, I'm Neil Whelan and welcome to the Wesleyan Podcast. In this edition, we're joined by two Wesleyan Financial Services Specialist Financial Advisors, Philip Carpenter and Diane Taylor. They'll be talking about how important planning for retirement is for teachers, if not for everyone. They'll be discussing pension changes that have impacted teachers in recent years, as well as a quick update on the changes made in the spring 2023 budget. As always, this podcast is for information purposes only and isn't financial advice. But if you do need help, Wesleyan Financial Services and its specialist financial advisors are there for you. So stay tuned until the end, where I'll let you know how you can get in touch. But for now, I'll hand you over to Diane, and first up, Philip. Hi, Diane. Um, I hope you're well. Just got a couple of questions for you, and I'd be really, and I think myself and uh, members of the public would be really interested to hear your thoughts on uh, on these questions. And one of the questions is, what what changes over the last few years do teachers need to be aware of when planning for their retirement? Hi, Philip. Hi. Yeah, there are a number of changes that, that teachers should be aware of whilst planning for retirement. Um, first and foremost are the changes that came into effect in 2015, the pension scheme changes there. Um, prior to the, the changes in 15, um, all, all members were members of the final salary scheme. And then what happened in 2015, the new career average scheme arrangement was introduced, which meant the members of the existing final salary scheme were moved dependent on their member type, basically. Um, in terms of um, some other sort of crucial things to sort of understand is you can collect your pension as early as 55 um, even though um, your normal pension age may be um, much, much later than that. Really, really important to kind of understand as well the changes that came into effect um, in regard to the cloud judgment. You may or may not have heard, you may have had emails about. Um, there was a recent ruling which is known as the McLeod judgment, which has found that the protections that were introduced in 2015 were actually discriminatory against public um, against younger members members of the public sector pension schemes um, involving in such as the, the the teachers pension scheme so some of those some of those changes are really really crucial that you do kind of understand where you sit in and around that in terms of planning to see actually um, what you'll be in receipt of are there anything that you need to be um, aware of and also, as I say, um, the the age in which you can take your pension is really, really vital um, because, yes, um, you may see on the scheme when you when you have a look at the teacher's pension website, you may see um, the, the, the scheme might give you a normal pension age. However, provided that your age 55 or over, um, you you can you can leave much earlier, and you know with some help and support, um, you can have a little look at you know planning towards what that sort of um, retirement age will be. And um, one thing to bear in mind, if you do actually take your pension benefits before that normal pension age, which is documented, that it 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 will be actuarially adjusted down, and that would be reflected in what you're paid um, based on that. Another crucial point to make is that the minimum pension age is actually changing as well. So it's set to change from the 6th of April 2028, when it will rise from the age of 55 to 57. And again, it is really worth sort of getting advice around that just to have a little look at, at where you stand based on your, your kind of date of birth. And just in an example, just sort of on the back of that, I have recently helped a teacher. Um, she'd had 28 years of service. She was 57 and she thought she would have had to have stopped going teaching until 67 because that's when her state pension was payable. Because of the recent changes to the pension scheme and moving into career average, she was delighted that the teacher's pension estimate that I was be to be able to provide for her, along with a robust financial plan, meant she was able to take her benefits a lot earlier than she had originally thought. So I guess that's uh, one of the things that I drew from that, uh, a lot of information, there, a lot of really useful information, is that as a Wesleyan advisor, you can help uh, provide illustrations to a prospective retiring teacher to help them plan ahead so it's not just a case of a, a conversation about the particulars of the pension scheme but you can actually i guess with an annual benefit statement you can produce an illustration is that correct 
Absolutely. And we, we, we just help build that financial plan for a client to see exactly what they have now in their current circumstances with the plan. Have a little look at, you know, potential shortfalls there and just to see if we can actually help to bridge any gaps that, that, that may occur and, and, and look from that perspective, definitely. So it sounds like the, 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 t- the retirement review is part of a wider holistic review, uh, which sounds really beneficial to any prospective uh, retiring teachers out there to see what the wide, wider implications of retirement, I guess, could be, such as mortgages, etc. Um, are there any other considerations that um, you, you would um, highlight um, for, for teachers that are planning their retirement? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, there, there are a few steps that are all built into this financial plan, you know, is, is looking at, you know, current income expenditure, looking at the income that you might want or need in retirement. You know, what are your plans? What are your dreams for retirement? What do you want to achieve? You know, and, and absolutely what that bottom, bottom line is just to make sure, you know, when you are planning to retire, that you, you have enough to support the retirement um, that that you want, as well as looking at, you know, retirement that you, the retirement income you already have in place um, and having a little look, look into that, really. In terms of kind of, you know, where you are, having a little look as well is always beneficial to see, you know, what provision you've got for state pension, um, which you can do. You can you can have a little look at the government website. You can request what's called a BR19 to have a little look at how many state pension years you have accrued to see if there's any shortfalls there. Um, really, really important just so that you can look at at that full picture. So these sound like really useful things that a teacher could be starting to get together, information they can start to put aside ready for a review with a Wesleyan financial revise, uh, advisor as they think about retirement. So uh, any other advice that you would give somebody who's perhaps approaching retirement, you know, what sort of things, what actions and steps should they be taking and when should they be taking them? At what stage, you know, is it important for them to actually get this financial advice? Again, it's, it's, it's important, you know, that you have a little look at that full picture, have a little look at, at not just your state pension, your teacher's pension, what other things that you've got in in, in in your assets overall, really, have a little look. Um, did you have any um, private pensions or pensions from a, a previous career? Did you take out any additional voluntary contributions over the years? And understanding the ways in which these can be accessed is 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 all part of the planning. Um, I recently was able to help a teacher release funds from their prudential um ABC pot that they'd saved into and it just helped them bridge the gap to look at you know take they took their teacher's pension at 55 but then they realized okay I've got to get to 67 before the state pension was going to be payable so what we were able to do is review all of the assets um which is when we came across this um pot of money that was with Prudential and at the age of 62 she was able to release 25 percent tax free lump sum which meant she could she could change in her car which she'd have lots of problems with she could look at getting a new car um and looking at the remainder of the pot now for that for the um money from prudential she's able now to access that in a flexible way um and with advice from myself so that she can look forward to having those luxuries she's worked so hard for in retirement the client was left, left very very happy so if I, you know, I've now booked in, contacted the Wesleyan, booked in for a, a, a session with yourself, a, a no obligation chat, you know, to start talking about my retirement. What sorts of things and documents should I be bringing to the meeting in preparation? Yeah, so what we would ask you to do is we'd ask you to um, access your teacher's pension, ask you to um download have a good look through your teacher's pension most recent statement and pull that off you would be wanting to bring that what we also have now um at wesleyan is we have a portal where you can upload um and and fill in um your your assets your current circumstances there is an an income and expenditure that you can fill, fill out on there and just with help and having all that 
um, prior to the meeting, it means that we can we can sit down, we can explore, we can confirm bits and pieces, and it just gives us that kind of open forum where we can we can ask any questions that we want to, and really really understand your circumstances as the client really, and um, just to be able to build that robust financial plan for you. So, following the recent spring budget. Uh, and all the announcements. What what does this actually mean for our teaching professionals? Yeah, so it's quite interesting you say that and, and, and ask the question really. So the removal of the lifetime allowance and significantly increasing the annual allowance will particularly support our senior teachers, head teachers and lecturers, which is it's just going to be great news for many people in education looking for that retirement planning piece. Well, thanks, Diane. That sounds, you know, really, really informative. A lot of useful information there just from the answers that you've given to those few questions. I do think that that will be you know, highly beneficial to any teacher, potential teacher or family member that's perhaps looking to take retirement in, in the near future. So thank you very much for answering all of those questions. Thank you. And that's our show for this week. Thank you to Philip and Diane. Retirement planning should be an ongoing thing for everyone. So if you do want to discuss your options with an expert, go to wesleyan.co.uk where you can book a no-obligation appointment with one of our specialist financial advisors. To learn more about Wesleyan more generally, you can find us on Twitter at Wesleyan, as well as by searching for us across Facebook, Instagram, and of course LinkedIn. And to listen to past and future episodes of the podcast, you can like and subscribe on all the usual platforms. But that's it for now. So until next time, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.